the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Holy and gracious God, I confess that I have sinned against you. Some of my sin I know, the thoughts and words and deeds of which I am ashamed, but some is known only to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I ask for forgiveness. Deliver and restore me that I may rest in peace. By the mercy of God, we are united with Jesus Christ, and in him we are forgiven. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we are to pray, and to give more than we need to desire or deserve. More upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things of which our conscience is betrayed, and giving us those good things of which we are not worthy to ask, except in the merit of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Good morning and welcome to worship. Please indicate your presence here today by using the card in the pew rack in front of you that says we're glad you're here. Please fill that out and put it in one of the offering baskets before you leave or on the back of the bulletin is a QR code that you can use. Welcome once again to God's house and worship this morning. Thank you to the team that put on the great breakfast this morning. There's one breakfast left this summer and that's next Sunday so we hope that you will take advantage of that. Next Sunday between services there'll be an opportunity for you to update your pictures in the church directory. Uh, we hope that you will uh, do that. That's down in the choir wing as you exit uh, the sanctuary doors. Just go right uh, and you'll see a table there and some more information. And that'll be next Sunday between worship services. Ladies, this coming Saturday, there'll be a retreat here at the church uh, for you. We commend that opportunity to you and the details are in the bulletin for you. Right around the bend is the gear up of our fall planning. And so on September 6, Wednesday Night Alive begins anew. That's for age three through the fifth grade. The schedule for that is on the back of the bulletin. It's a wonderful opportunity for Bible study and crafts and dinner and fun and music. So that starts on the 6th. Also on September 6th, Living Word Voices, our adult choir, goes back into uh, rehearsal. Do you have to read music to uh, sing in the choir? No, you don't. 
And so if the Lord is uh, calling you to sing in the choir, we hope that you will uh, consider that. That starts on the 6th of September at 6.50 in the evening here in the sanctuary. And then on that Saturday, the 9th of uh, September, there's a choir retreat here at the church from 9 until noon in which one sings through the entire semester of the music to get a feel for that. And so that all starts on September 6th. Rally Day then is right around the corner. That's the re-beginning of Sunday School for age three through adult. You'll notice they're printed as a part of your uh, bulletin. You'll notice that there are the sermon series that in this new cycle we'll be covering between now and this time next year, the various topics. The first sermon series Pastor Malinak and I are gonna share with you is entitled His Questions. We're gonna look at some of the questions that Jesus asks in the scriptures. Um, we're so looking forward to, uh, to this uh, series. And then also on rally day, as we start Sunday school, adults, a whole new opportunity for you here in the sanctuary at 10 o'clock. The various topics for this next cycle through this time next year is also printed for you. I'm gonna be teaching a class on Isaiah chapters one to 33. And that starts on Rally Sunday, September the 10th. That also means a new whole new round of small groups is about ready to begin. That starts September 5th. Hope you'll pick up one of the uh, great brochures on that in the extended narthex before you leave or go online. There are 19 various offerings throughout the year from now until this time next year. Topics are so varied and wonderful. They're, they're short-term little small groups that you can come in and uh, out of. So check that out on our website, mylwlc.com, or pick up a brochure before you leave today. This past summer, there were several different mission trips, all involving the youth of our congregation. And at this time, I'd like to ask our Director of Youth Ministries, David Colston, to come forward and some representatives from those trips to do some sharing. Morning, David. Good morning. Well, welcome. Thank you guys so much for um, coming this morning. One of my favorite things to do um, in youth ministry is the mission trips we do each summer. It's a chance to get out into the community, around the country and around the world to share God's love and be God's hands and feet. I think it's such a wonderful blessing that God allows us to come alongside him and to do his work. Every year I tell the kids how this is an amazing opportunity for you to go and to do God's work, but also to come back and tell people about what you've done. But I was also remind the kids that, yes, we're doing things to help others, but it's ultimately God that's doing the work. He allows us to come alongside him in this ministry and what a wonderful opportunity that is for us to just be God's hands and feet in this world that he's given us. We're only there for a week. We know that the long-term partners are there for 52 weeks. But we come alongside those long-term partners and we help them with their ministry while we're there. And we help them grow their ministry and make their ministry easier. I thank you all so much who are uh, back here as we go for your prayers and your financial support. Uh, we would not be able to do these ministries without those. Um, the amount of people we get to influence and be impactful for each summer is amazing. I wish all of y'all could go and you guys could see the lives we change, both the places we go and the people that we bring their lives as well. So I'm going to have a couple of these young people share some of the stories. We went on three trips this year. We went to Tulsa. We went to Costa Rica and Louisiana. We had a little over 60 total participate in these trips, and they'll share a little bit about them. Okay, so um, I went to Costa Rica, and uh, we did a lot, so I want to make sure I don't miss anything. But um, So what we did is we saw the completion of a five-year construction project that we've been working on. So we made an open-air gym, and we started it our first year partnering with our church in Costa Rica, or not our church, but the church we partner with in Costa Rica. And so that was really cool to see that completed. And then we also um, did home visits. So we gave some families um, a bag of food and then we talked and prayed with them. And so that was really nice getting to speak with the community. And then um, we also got to build new relationships and like 
re re never mind. Um, <laughs> we got to work with like and rebuild our um, old relationship, so that was really cool. And that's one of my favorite parts about going to Costa Rica is that um, we get to see familiar people and also see like new people we can be friends with. And then how I saw God was um, during the home visits, we had really good conversa conversations with people, and then also it was really cool seeing how our two cultures are like really different, but we're all still connected through Christ. So I went on the Louisiana trip, more specifically to De Quincey, Louisiana, and um, there were a bunch of different crews doing different things there, but I was on the VBS crew. And leading up to VBS while we were preparing for it and whatever, we were trying to get an idea of how many kids we could expect and prepare materials for. And every time we asked, it was like, oh, well, you guys could either have one or like 12 kids. I don't really know. Like, it just depends what kids actually want to come to VBS. And we were like, okay, I mean, we'll deal with what we got, but we'll make it work. So leading up to that, we were praying to God, like, can we please have a bunch of kids come to VBS? Like, we could really, really use this because we want to share God's word with kids in this community. Um, so the first day of VBS, it started out with only, like, one or two kids. And then by the end, we had 30. And it was just God's way of, like, letting us share his word with the community in such a fun way and through his youth. I went on the exact same trip as Naomi. Uh, during church, uh, I sat next to this wonderful woman. She was very sweet. Uh, no sweeter than my mother, in my opinion. But, um, but while I was sitting next to her, she was said um, that she was just astonished that a group of teenagers would take that time out of their summer to come and help De Quincey. I was like, well, I have family here, so I kind of felt obligated almost. And she was like, well, I'm glad that you came and helped out your family as well. You all must just be angels to have come from God to have come here to De Quincey to help out. You all just have this very loving glow about you. So once again, thank you guys. We're so excited to do this again next year. Thank you, David and ladies. We continue now with the anthem for the morning.
Jesus died and rose again Today's reading is from the 8th chapter of Romans Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Would you read responsively with me Psalm 67? May God be gracious to us and bless us. And may His face shine upon us. That your way may be known upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all According to St. Matthew, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. In this portion of scripture, Jesus says a phrase that sounds very harsh. But in the Greek, it shows us that it's a tongue in cheek phrase. When Jesus, as uh, recorded here, translated here, uses the term dog, in the Greek, the technical term is puppy that tells us that when Jesus turns to the woman and uses that term he is speaking tongue in cheek and the woman would understand Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyra and Sidon just then a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting have mercy on me Lord son of David my daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, yes, Lord. Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. The Gospel of the Christ. Please be seated.
Would you open up your Bibles, please, with me for our time of study today to Romans, the eighth chapter. If you're using a pew edition, you'll find that in the New Testament on page 138. Romans, the eighth chapter. As I began the process of putting various topics, various bumper stickers in association with this summer sermon series, as I began that process, I quickly learned that there are quite a few bumper stickers out there that have a message with theological implications. And so to be honest, it it took me a little bit of time to be able to narrow it down to those that we would be addressing over these weeks of this summer. There was one sticker, though, that particularly caught my eye. And when I read it, I said to myself, I need to preach that one. God loves you. Everybody else thinks you're an idiot. (laughs) When I read that, I inked that right in on my notepad and said, I've got to preach. I've got to preach that. As we think about that bumper sticker, though, amidst the chuckles or the smiles or the laughter associated with it, there is a really serious topic that's embedded in that bumper sticker. It's the issue of our idiocy. The issue of our idiocy. We all do idiotic things. We all do idiotic things. And now we've come to the part of the sermon where you insert your own example into the sermon. I'd like you to think about something that's on your list of things where you say, was I an idiot to do that? I'd like you to think about that. Let me give you a couple seconds. Go ahead. Got it? Insert example into the sermon. Let's move on, right? The scriptures tell us of idiotic things that are done. In Matthew, the seventh chapter, we read this. Jesus says, everyone then who hears these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on rock. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall because it had been founded on rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. It's idiotic, isn't it, to build your house directly upon shifting sand. Jesus says, that's that's foolish. Or there's the parable of the ten bridesmaids that are waiting for the groom. The point of the parable there is to be prepared for the coming of the Lord. But Jesus tells a story about five of the bridesmaids. They had a flask of oil with them. The other five didn't. And so, when the groom eventually shows up, five of them are missing it because they're off trying to buy oil. And he calls them, he calls them foolish. Foolish. In Luke, the 24th chapter, we studied it. That road to Emmaus experience, post-cross, post-resurrection Jesus has revealed himself to some of the disciples, but they don't know it's him. And Jesus says, oh, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. The Bible tells us that we can have foolish words that come out of our mouth and foolish thoughts The Bible tells us in Ephesians, the fifth chapter, entirely out of place is obscene, silly, and vulgar talk. Instead, let there be thanksgiving. 2 Timothy 2, have nothing to do with stupid and senseless controversies. You know they breed quarrels. 
Proverbs 1 says, fools despise wisdom and instruction. Can we all agree this morning? Can we all agree that every single one of us does and says idiotic things? Can we all agree to that? And to the likes of us come these powerful, powerful words. Look at verse 35, please, of Romans 8. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Hardship there. Hardship is a word that connotes being squeezed or feeling under pressure. It's a word that that means difficulties, including emotional stress. Paul says, can hardship separate you from God's love? Mm -mm. He goes on and mentions distress. That's a compound word, actually, of two words in the Greek. It's narrow and space. So it's those times where you just, you just feel hemmed in. You feel, you feel pressure pushing in on you. And Paul says, can distress separate you? No. Persecution here is suffering for the name of Christ. And oftentimes, as we see historically in the life of the church, oftentimes associated with persecution is the very next word, famine. He then says nakedness, the inability to clothe oneself, feeling vulnerable and unprotected. He then says peril, that's being exposed to danger. He then mentions the sword. In the Greek, it's actually dagger. It's the little thing that has been concealed that then is pulled out can can kill or hurt paul says can hardship or distress or persecution famine nakedness peril or sword none of that can separate you from the love of god in christ jesus none of it can separate you But can sin, can sin separate you? Or to put it another way, what about the idiocy of our sin? Our first parents, Adam and Eve, placed in the perfect place, it was Perfect in the Garden of Eden. Perfect. They were to serve God in a way to serve God as they were to serve one another. God said, you can eat of any tree of the garden, including the tree of life. You can eat of any tree of the garden. There's one tree that you don't eat of. That's the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. God said, the day that you eat of that, the day that you determine for yourself that which is right and wrong, that's the death penalty. You will die. But we see that scripture tells us that our first parents, they, they rationalized that plucking of the forbidden tree was somehow good. And they pluck from the tree and they sink their teeth into the forbidden fruit and sin enters into creation. There is, is no greater example of idiocy than believing that our ways are better than God's ways. There is no greater example of idiocy than the idiocy of our sin. Isaiah writes in the 53rd chapter, all we like sheep 
have gone astray. We've all turned to our own way. It's the all-encompassing, the all-enveloping idiocy of sin. Hardship, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, and sword. None of that separates us from the love of God. But does the idiocy of our sin, does the idiocy of our sin separate us? Look at verse 38. For I'm convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing. John writes in 1 John 4, he says, In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Atonement means to bring at one Sin separating us from the creator, the great chasm, the great gulf. And when Jesus goes to the cross, all of the idiocy of our sin, all of the idiocy of our sinful thought and word and deed and what we've done and what we've left undone, all of that was placed upon Jesus. And Jesus cries from the cross to tell the story, paid in full, the forgiveness won, the atonement affected. Nothing, nothing can separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ. Nothing, even our sin, because all of it, all of it has been atoned for through the blood of Jesus Christ. All of it. I must have been 12, maybe 13. Part of the youth group at our church in California and we were washing cars. So many of the congregants had brought their vehicles there and the community there and there was a a nice line there in the parking lot. And it was decided that the car that we had been working on well, it needed to be put into neutral so it could be pushed out of the way to get to more cars. And so the youth director turned to me and said, David, David go in there, put it in neutral. We're going to push the car. Well, well, I'd never done anything like that. I didn't, I didn't know how to, how to do that, but I didn't want to look stupid. All of my friends were there, so I get behind the wheel in the car. It's just me in there. And I went to shift the car. And I shifted it with the directional signal. (laughs) And tore it right off. There was that moment of panic when I was all alone that I just wanted to lock all the doors and stay there. (laughs) But I stepped out of the vehicle with the directional signal in my hand. God loves you. Everybody else thinks you're an idiot. That was not one of my more stellar moments. You might even say, idiotic. But I was met with grace. I was met with grace. 
as the owner of the vehicle saw me standing there and I explained what happened and I said, I guess you don't shift with this, do you? <laughs> I was met with grace and I could live in that grace. We would do well, right? To extend grace to one another. When we see in others those less than stellar moments in their lives, we would do well to extend grace. Because grace has been extended to us, to the supreme example of idiocy, our sin. Grace has been extended through us through the Lord Jesus Christ. And nothing can separate us from his love nothing including the idiocy of our sin because every sin and the condition of us being a sinner has been redeemed by the Lord Jesus Christ. And in that grace, we live. Let's rise, confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of our Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Please remain standing.
we begin our prayers of the church, I would like to ask for your prayers for the Jenkins family. Our dear sister, Hertha Jenkins, was called home to be with the Lord this morning. So please keep her family in your prayers. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Gracious God, we give you thanks that nothing can separate us from your love not even the idiocy of our sin. Receive the thanks, adoration, and praise of your redeemed people. Lord, in your mercy. Holy God, make this congregation a house of prayer and fashion us into people of prayer. Help us to welcome fellow sinners, giving us grace to walk with them on the lifelong journey of repentance and obedient faith. Guide our mission and ministries to be expressions of your love and service to our neighbors and in our world. Lord, in your mercy. Loving God, keep our hearts and minds and hearts focused upon the hope we have in Jesus. Let the daily work of our hands be accomplished in the strength of your spirit and to the glory of your holy name. Lord, in your mercy. God of comfort and peace, we lift before your throne Audrey Schneider, Barbara Thomas, the family of Ron Hartman, Jeannie Myers, Roy Swain, Robert Spencer. Lord, we ask that you would comfort all who grieve, especially Herb and Paula Robinson and family as they mourn the death of Herb's mother, Barb Quaddy. Deanna Thompson and family as they mourn the death of Deanna's brother, Roger Weeks. We rejoice with Herb and Paula Robinson at the birth of their grandson, Jameson Banks Hubbard. Hear now, our Lord, the prayers we hold on our lips and in our hearts. Into your hands, Father, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your goodness and mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, our Lord took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You are all invited to this table of grace.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ now strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. And we pray that in your mercy that you would strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. May the Lord make his face to shine on you and to be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you of his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Now go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.